Hello guys and welcome! We got a bunch of new information about the upcoming House Corino finally released. So, who's House Corino? Make way for the royal person. Looks like a neat little animation here. I wonder if this is later the palace? Is this when House Corino lands on Tune or so? I'm not sure, but looks pretty cool. So, his Imperial Majesty, the Padisha Emperor of the known universe, Shadam IV, will soon be arriving on Arrakis to settle the question of its supervision once and for all. He is not happy about having to make the journey. He is really pissed. House Corino has been at the helm of the Imperium for 10 millennium, balancing the conflicts interesting of the Joam, the Spacing Guild and the Great Houses, and they're not about to lose their grip on the most valuable planet in the universe. It's the only planet where we can get the spice, right? And that's uh, as, as essential um, resource for space travel, basically. The Emperor brought with him his terrifying legions of Sarokar, mysterious elite warriors from Salusa Secundus. He'll have to use them as well as the full extent of his political acumen and his hold over the Chuam to subdue the unruly houses and savage rebels of Arrakis. And there we see the picture of him, it's even animated. It's the Emperor in his throne room and will probably be his faction picture as well, I assume. Um, Shadam IV, the 81st Padisha Emperor, has ruled the Corino Empire for 36 years after the tragic assassination of his father. After years handling the tumultuous politics of the Landsraad, Shaddam has become an expert at using his opponent's ambitions against them. His growing paranoia, fueled by his lack of a male heir and the growing, growing popularity of Duke Leto Atreides, led him to set up the Spice Wars as a way to eliminate any threats to his rule and assert his domination on the spice trade. That would have been easy, they should have just allowed women to inherit, right? <laughs> so, and here are the four counselors. We knew of them already in my last video, I already told you about them. It's basically exactly the four we already expected. And here now they specify a little bit what they will be about. It's pretty much what we kinda expected anyway. The Imperial Administration is perfectly crafted to rule a galaxy-wide territory efficiently. At the heart of it lies Shaddam's court of trusted advisors, mostly composed of family members and long-time associates, whose loyalty and competence could not be questioned. The first one, um, Princess Irulan. I was wondering if they go for a movie or for the book Princess Irulan, but it looks like they went for the book version, which I deeply prefer anyway. Um, Princess Irulan is the eldest daughter of Shadam IV. Involved in both the plots of her father and of the Bene Gesserit, she is used to making the best of a bad situation. So, like I said, since she's a Bene Gesserit, and they already kinda hinted that she's involved in plots and spy and all that stuff, I assume she will be like she will support like um, an agent playstyle or so, or an, an playstyle where you influence others that also would um, um, support her Bene Gesserit um, heritage. She's an adept at the Bene Gesserit, it's kind of a lower rank, but still, I mean, being even a low ranking Bene Gesserit is like already a billion times stronger than not being um, a being with Mm, let's say slight magical mind influencing powers. The second uh, advisor is, as we also guessed rightly, Princess Vencesia. Um, that's the third daughter of Shadam IV, trained from the youngest age for stewardship. Her independent mind pushes her to seek a more active role in House Corino's doings. So, as they kind of hinted here, I assume it's yeah, about stewardship, governing managing your settlements and so on. That will probably be her role. Um, the third one is Aramsham and here they name him Otto Aramsham. I wasn't, I, w I didn't know about his first name to be honest, but okay. Captain Aramsham is a proud officer of the Sarukar, sent on Arrakis during the Spice Wars. Aramsham is an expert at using conscripts as cannon footer to support Sarukar legions. Yeah, that's basically the military guys we expected already too. 
and it seems like he will give um, the conscripts bonuses or maybe he gives or maybe he will um, have a similar bonus like the Arconan have where when they die you get some costs refunded or maybe they just become cheaper or get any buff so it will definitely be your go-to lord for um, a military playthrough of course and last but not least we have Hazimir Fenring is a sharp assassin's mentate one of the deadliest fighters in the Imperium and the closest friend of Sharam the Fourth. So we knew already he is a very close friend to Sharam, right? He's like his best friend basically. But they also say he's a, a assassin and a deadly fighter. So maybe he's also um um as a um yeah spy focused kinda. Maybe he's also kinda supporting the agent playstyle, I assume. And a deadliest fighter would be really cool. Like uh, at some point they announced they will make heroes playable on the battlefield themselves, which would be really amazing because then we get like a lot of different new unique hero like units. So I really hope for it. And yeah, I'm really curious to read their actual abilities. Once of course um, we get more information, I will um, upkeep you. But now we got here more information about the general gameplay of House Corino. We also see here a very nice video about, um, that's like the artillery throne I assume, but we will read more about the artillery throne later. So, the Emperor has no intention to stay in Arrakis for long, bringing to Arrakis his royal spaceships, mobile palaces fully equipped to accommodate the Imperial administration and act as their center of operation. So I assume that was the thing we saw at the very start. Uh, the spaceship landing on Iraq is that this is kind of his, yeah, his capital, I want to say. So let's see what it will look like in game, but I assume it will be it. Okay, ready to stop. And of course, if the need arises, he can call for a second of these juggernauts to descend from the skies towards Iraq is. Okay, why do we want a second? Okay. <laughs> looks like we could get a second base then, which would be... Interesting, okay. I'm not entirely sure if this is what they are hinting, but maybe he can later on call a second base because they give like a lot of um, defensive value. Also, he can recruit units there, but it sounds kind of powerful to be honest. <laughs> we'll see. The position of Emperor brings a lot of power, but even more crucially, a lot of responsibility. The most critical one being to keep the space in guild docile. While House Corino receives a tax or bribe of spice from most factions on Arrakis, they must in turn pay the guild's fee to maintain interstellar travel at an affordable price. Not only for their own profit, but also for the benefit of all the great houses in the Imperium. So yeah, of course, they cannot uh, add the same mechanic where um, basically they have to pay indirectly the Emperor. I mean, he's the Emperor, so they made it. Okay, we will have a similar... Um, Roll, but he has to pay the spacing guild now. So, but in the end, it's kind of similar, I assume. This duty gives them a lot of leeway to influence the other factions, further reinforced by their ability to lend Sardal Car, to change the Landsrat agenda, and to use their connections to manipulate the Joan market. Oh, that's quite interesting. So, it really seems like you can, yeah, lend your special troopers like it, like it happened in the movies, right? When the Sadarka were lent to the Baron Harkonnen to defeat Atreides. We also can see the five units of House Corino, which will be, um, as usual, a basic infantry option, a ranged infantry. Then we will get here they're called incinerators, which will be basically the armor shredding unit. Then we get the Sadarkas as the elite option and the artillery throne. It's basically the same with. All the other factions, the same unit types, but of course, each of them have usually some unique abilities um, added towards it. Also, we got some text here, let's see. In the last recurse, House Corino can always rely on its military might to make a reluctant faction fall in line. It uses large formations to cheap conscripts, uh, of cheap conscripts, and a few elite units specialized in shock tactics, including the formidable Saruka. Its armies are renowned for being roughly efficient and leaving no room for error. Infantry are conscript swordmen, 
relatively weak when alone. Their mastery of complex formation make them stronger with each ally infantry in their vicinity. Okay, that's so basically the buff itself, which is okay. I usually always go with two free infantry at the start, which will basically just lean into that the basic gameplay anyway. Ranged infantry are conscript riflemen. Like their melee counterparts, they get stronger when surrounded by their allies. Okay, I wonder if normal infantry and ranged infantry support each other as well, or if it's just melee for melee, range for ranged. Incinerators will um, flamethrowers that bring agonizing death to even the most armored opponents. Yeah, it's the armor shredding unit, as usual. And the Sadurka, the infamous elite swordsman of the Emperor. Originating from the mysterious prison planet Salusa Secundus, the secret of the training and recruitment process is one of the most well guarded in the Imperium. They are as renowned for their legendary fighting ability as for their lack of mercy. The Sadurka, in my opinion, are pretty much one of the coolest um, units in the Dune lore. Unfortunately, they get kinda slaughtered in the books. They get. Um, beaten by the Fremen later on in the Jihad it's called um, but still I always like the idea of the, the Sadarka getting trained from the age of a child and we all saw the movie when they chanted it was probably the most epic scene in the whole movie I'm not gonna lie I loved it so I'm pretty looking forward I really hope they will be strong of course they will probably not make them overpowered because they still need to maintain um, faction balancing and let's not forget that Tritis troops um, in lore were kind of only shortly close behind Sato Car, so yeah. And in the movie we have seen that too, they were they pretty whole, they hold the line pretty well. And the last unit we got here actually is the artillery drone. Throw high caliber explosives from a long distance. These dreadful siege machines need to be anchored to, to sound ground to operate. So... Every faction gets their unique throne, right? Um, the Atreides one is like a buffing throne that buffs units around them. Uh, but I don't really remember the other thrones too much, to be honest. Um, the um, Fremen one, it's it's not really a throne, but it's more like a unit that makes other units, I think, invisible around it and so on. And I have to admit, I forgot the Harkonnen and the Smuggler one. The Smuggler one was a ranged one like some fire support but it didn't i don't really remember what it did but i think getting some artillery is pretty cool it will probably be immobile then but my opinion will not matter much because most units in let's talk a bit about the game most units are really slow anyway that's something that that is fun because it's not so stressful sometimes on other hands it can be really a bit I don't want to say boring, but less engaging because they move really long. Of course, you get like the flight and so on. But if you need to send um, emergency troops somewhere, you can only watch while they slowly crawl across the planet, which is, of course, yeah, it's a huge desert planet. But I always struggle in the late game um, to defend my settlements from several threats, even with the flying. Um, it costs, first of all, a lot of money, but second of all, like, the unit maximum is kind of limited. And basically, um, the more elite units um, you have, the more um, uni um, units um, slots or whatever you want to say um, they use. So basically, you have, like, um, let's say, 30 units um, slots. And infantry uses one, range infantry uses maybe one, and Sadoka will use like three or four points. So it's you have like ten to fifteen units at most in the end game usually. And I really wish you would get more, but having an artillery throne maybe it's it's not nice to support um and defend settlements easier because you can use them from the range so they are more safe. Because usually if you have like one or two units only in the settlement, they will get overrun on a full offensive anyway. But with an artillery throne Maybe, let's see what the range will be, but yeah, I'm looking pretty forward. I will probably make another video um, where I talk about like the game and what ideas I have um, that they could become even better. I mean, they're good, but 
there's still the room of course <laughs> definitely but i still love the game and i look forward for what else we get and i hope you enjoyed it too and i see you next time guys bye bye